my friends welcome to 200 3d CAD problems in FreeCAD today I want to work on exercise 15 exercise 15 is symmetric in the both directions so we can get away with working on the quarter of the object with that I decided I will be working on the top right half top right quarter of the object so let's go ahead and position our object at the center and I'm going to say this is pretty close to the center all right let's get started with sketching so I want to draw only this part, only this one. Polyline could be a very resourceful tool in this. So polyline gives you a chance to actually draw a curve within the same command. What I mean is, let's go ahead. Let's say I am using line, so I click one and I click again and then draw another line so there was one two three four four clicks to draw two lines if it was polyline for example so I could start from here I could go there two clicks three clicks so with polyline it reduces number of clicks so that's you know not that it matters too much but if you wanted to see polyline is more efficient without taking out the command I can go here and then draw a curve with pressing M on the keyboard so I'm just fixing it there my mouse no click and then say M M M so that's the wrong curve another M there so it switches through the modes if you click M on the keyboard so that's our mode and I got that see now the next straight line is tangential to that curve we can get out of that by again switching to M M there so that's our free line so polyline this case uh, similar places like that polyline makes really good sense uh, and you use M to alternate through different options just remember that after the curve the line will be tangential so at this point I say that's I'll come back to fix it so what I'm doing is I'm clicking I'm keeping my mouse on here with the with the dot that points like constraint coincident the coincident dot appears so I'm keeping it there on the left mouse and then clicking M on the keyboard there so all I did with one command the whole thing whereas if I used line and arc I would have to come back and forth like five seven times anyway I want to create this hole right now so that's drawing the sketch now I want to place some constraint so this is 40 we can see from the sketching and this is 50 this is 40 radius so 40 this length is we don't know but we know that this point is 100 millimeter away from the axis so 100 right we got that one now this we don't know we'll we we'll probably know that's 54 right so looks like we don't know where this goes oh we know it will be this so this line is for that All right so this will be vertical okay and this is 54 radius 54 okay how about this line how far away this line is 
we know that this point would be on the same plane and I'm sure this will be on this line as well all right I might be wrong about this yeah We'll come back to it. So this point is 280 over 2 millimeter away from the axis. So 280 divided by 2. Right. So that's 140 millimeter. I want to keep it here. And okay, we'll go one by one. This point is 100 millimeter away that's wrong I didn't want to do that so this point is 100 millimeter away from the axis all right we'll have to come back to this okay this radius is 40 millimeter diameter so that's 20 radius how about this center this center is 180 over 2 millimeter away so 180 divided by 2 we got that one All right and this point we have to see how far that how far away that point is okay how about this this is 10 so this is 10 so you got that line you probably cannot see it but it's there that line there it's because of this dimension okay so this is this is 10 so we got that part sorted out we have two more degrees of freedom which is this length of this line and length of this line okay we can fix that so the center of this circle is 10 millimeter away from this line so this this point is 10 millimeter inside and we have so that out part is all constrained now only we have to worry about this point the diameter of this which is Forty, so radius twenty. Oh, we got that whole part sorted out pretty quick. So that's a fully constrained sketch. I want to say sketch one by four. Okay. Um, renaming this sketch at this model doesn't make much sense. I mentioned that in one of the earlier videos, but when it becomes like when I'll be doing complex object with say 10 sketches and then I want to go back do some parametric capability um, it is important to know which sketch is where I want to know which sketch is where so it is a good practice from the beginning to rename your sketches and that's the reason I keep renaming the sketch although it doesn't make sense right now so the depth the height of the pad will be 20 I'm going to say I want to make an extrude by 20. So that's our first part. Now I want to do this extrusion, this little extrusion, the circular on here. So to do that, I want to draw a sketch on this. Before I do that, okay. In one of the previous videos, in my 50 uh, beginners test, FreeCAD beginners test that has 50 videos in that series. I mentioned that in several videos that uh, there are some issues with sketching when it comes to uh, it is called topological naming problem and that's why we keep avoiding building sketch right on top of this face. So uh, what I mean by that is uh, next week probably I'll, I'll do another video on this topological naming issue for this series. I'll keep it short but as a kind of like a trailer to that we can 
select on this face and then draw a sketch on that plain face right now and pull in this geometry draw our two circle make them equal so this is diameter 60 so we can do that that looks fine for now but again when in future we will be doing some complex object with parametric capability mapping this sketch exactly on on this on this face on this face may create some issue well not may it will create some issue that's why it is best not to map any sketch right on the face if I can so it is best to avoid that practice what I want to do is I want to draw a sketch on XY plane and then offset it by the height of this extrusion which is 20 I want to do that I don't want to map it directly on this so I'm making that sketch independent of this face and that will pay off again in future when we'll be doing some complex object so next week when I do my weekend special a complex object what I've been doing uh, every weekend I do a complex object I will shed some more light on this topological naming issue in that video So for now, what I did is now this sketch, previously it was mapped on this face, now it says map mode deactivated. Now we'll have to use that feature every now and then when some inclined plane comes up. But since I can do this without doing, you know, uh, without mapping it on that face, I just wanted to avoid it. So I'm say sketch circular cylindrical. extrusion and I want to pull that up by 5 because it is total 25 so I want to pull that up by 5 so we have two parts I want to make them a fusion so that's our quarter part and now I want to mirror it I don't have my image uh, I don't have my video of my face in this corner here today because I wanted to show this little axis this XYZ axis uh, how that can help us actually in deciding the mirroring so I want to mirror it against this face this face which is on see from this little triangular uh, axis cross I can say this is Z and X XZ plane so I want to select XZ plane from here because this is where I actually decide which plane I'm going to mirror against. So I selected the one foot part, part, this part, and then I selected the mirror plane and I hit OK. So now we have the mirror. We go find that these two part, make another fusion. I'm going to rename that as half part. Okay. And then now I want to mirror the whole part against this face, which is from this little triangle I can say Y in this direction and Z on the uh, this direction. So this is Z direction, this is Y direction, like this is Y direction. I can get a hint from this little axis cross because I don't have my actual axis cross here and it doesn't say X or Y. So I go there and then mirror it again with YZ plane. Now here we have mirrored one part two times, which would be a little bit um, problematic or it's a different function if I did this whole part in part design. So this object part workbench is the best to work on so if it was in part design part design does not allow like directly to mirroring it will have to select a different function to do that so but part it makes it simple 
you mirror it as many times as you want. Anyway, this is our final object. I want to refine so it look great. I can actually make some coloring to make it look exactly as our assignment. Well, it's, it's something that I kind of like try to avoid doing it too much. So I want to pick a screen color there and say, okay, so at least we got one of the colors applied. I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.